All right, hello and welcome back to the Masana YouTube channel. I'm back down here in the bunker room. It's been a while since I've filmed down here. As you might notice, we have a lot of controls ready to go for some upcoming projects. Uh, I've been busy traveling to job sites, filming those projects. Uh, if you have watched those videos, thank you. If you haven't, maybe go check them out. I've also been going to trade shows too. Recently, I've gone to the IBS International Builder Show and then the AIA Architecture Expo. And I've gotten a lot of the same questions, so I wanted to jump in and just create a video about the top five frequently asked questions regarding radiant ceilings. Now, the first one has to do with radiant ceilings and heating specifically. People often come up to me and ask, why do you heat from the ceiling? Doesn't heat rise? And that's a myth we got to debunk. Heat does not rise. Hot air is what rises. The fluid is what rises. Heat is a form of thermal radiation and thermal radiation only moves from hot objects to cooler ones. So if we create a heated ceiling, it will radiate thermal energy to cooler objects and occupants below, just like the sun. And so we can heat from the ceiling. Uh, you can also provide radiant cooling from the ceiling too, um, but specifically regarding radiant ceiling heating, uh, there is no issue with that. Hot air rises, but radiant heat, thermal energy moves from hot objects to cooler ones, so we can very easily heat your room via a radiant ceiling. The next question has to do with radiant cooling. When it comes to radiant cooling, people often ask, you know, how do you provide cooling without condensation? They think about a cold drink where you have condensation forming on the outside of a glass. Uh, and so radiant cooling is really where, you know, Masana was born. We had to figure out how to provide radiant cooling without that condensation. And so that's what you see behind me. This is the history of our sensors and our sensors monitor operative temperature, relative humidity, and indoor air quality. But with those first two factors, we can calculate the dew point temperature of every zone of a home. And so we know the exact point at which a radiant surface would produce condensation. And then our controls, which you see above, our MBOX hydronic controllers, can use mixing valves in the mechanical room to adjust the supply water temperature to the radiant surface to make sure we're always just above the dew point temperature, maximizing cooling output while still avoiding condensation. Now the next question, frequently asked question number three, has to do with ceiling fixtures. So it's a little tailored more towards architects, uh, but they often ask about lights, sprinklers, speakers, stuff that would go in your ceiling and you know how we would work around that here at Masana for a radiant ceiling system. And so during the design phase, we do try and work around ceiling fixtures like lights and sprinklers and such. Uh, we do that in the panel layout. We make sure we avoid them. But in the event that we cannot reach our desired radiant surface area uh, when we've avoided these ceiling fixtures, we can actually go ahead and put holes in the panels uh, in various spots in various sizes. And so there's places on the panel where you can put a hole, you know, that's about two and a half inches up to four inches. And so depending on where you're placing that hole in the panel, you can put holes in them. We just make sure that you avoid the hydronic piping so you don't have any leaks. Uh, but we can typically work around ceiling fixtures in the, in the design phase, as well as put holes in the panels to incorporate them later on or when you need to uh, during construction. Number four is why would you not just use a radiant floor? Radiant floors are already pretty popular. So why did you move that technology to the ceiling? We moved our radiant surface to the ceiling to achieve a really low thermal mass. So our panel can respond very quickly to changes in humidity. And so when providing radiant cooling, we want to avoid condensation. And so because of that, we want a really fast responding panel. So if there's a sudden change in humidity, we can change the temperature of the ceiling panel a lot faster than we could a lot of traditional pouring concrete slab radiant floors. Those are very high mass systems they're slow to respond and so when it comes to radiant cooling you need a really low mass panel which gives you a fast response time and then we're also able to get more output via a radiant ceiling compared to a radiant floor you're also getting an unobstructed radiant surface and so you know with a radiant floor you're covering with carpet with furniture stuff that absorbs that thermal energy and might inhibit its performance uh, whereas with a radiant ceiling you're creating creating an unobstructed radiant surface on your ceiling. You don't have to worry about anything covering it. And so that thermal radiation is really being transferred to the objects and occupants below. Now, the last question has to do with retrofit applications. Uh, people often ask, you know, how it compares to a radiant floor retrofit. And typically installing a radiant ceiling is a lot easier than a radiant floor. When you do a radiant floor, you're typically raising the floor by a bit and you have to adjust door frames, stairs, and stuff like that. With a radiant ceiling, you know, it tends to be a lot easier just to drop the ceiling by a couple inches to install these panels. Uh, and so those are my top five frequently asked questions when it comes to radiant ceilings. If you have any more questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. And uh, maybe there will be a video specific to that question. Uh, as always, I hope you learned something in this video. Thank you for watching. Take care.